Infinity. I am really excited about today's episode because it's something I really, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I love being alone. <laughs> Uh, and there's so many benefits to it, and I just want to share that with everybody. I don't know, let's just get right into it, because there's so much to say on this topic. Today, we're talking about the value, importance, and gift of time alone. Or better yet, gifts, plural. We are going to break this conversation up into two parts. Today we're going to focus on our relationships with others and how they impact our relationship with ourselves. And we'll get a little bit into that. But next week in part two, we're going to focus on our relationship with ourselves, how to befriend ourselves, and the benefits of doing so. Time alone produces, strengthens, and fortifies a solid foundation within ourselves. It's so essential. It starts with decision and intention, which we'll discuss. And if we're looking at cultural and societal influences, there's a lot of noise detracting from our relationships with ourselves. And there's a lot of conditioning on time alone. For example, I think there's an attitude of like loner, loser, outcast. Uh, Or um, misconceptions about I'm an extrovert, so I shouldn't spend time alone. I'm an introvert, whatever those kind of, you know, ideas. Uh... And I just really want to break it down today into simple understandings of the importance of this solid foundation that comes from the decision and intention to spend time alone. We'll talk about the hows and the whys. And I thought that I would start this off. My aunt shared a quote from Oprah with me recently that I think fits perfectly into this conversation. If you feel incomplete, you alone must fill yourself with love in all your empty, shattered spaces. With that in mind, let's get into it. I wanted to start in the context of our relationships with others. Because I think that's the juxtaposition between (laughs) spending time alone and spending time with others. And we recently shared this quote on the Reself Instagram, which is vital to this conversation, to this context of alone time and our relationship with others. Tell everyone you know, my happiness depends on me, so you're off the hook. And then demonstrate it. Be happy no matter what they're doing. Practice feeling good no matter what. And before you know it, you will not give anyone else responsibility for the way you feel. And then you'll love them all. Because the only reason you don't love them is because you're using them as your excuse to not feel good. Pretty powerful, right? It's important to be aware of the ways in which we depend on the people in our lives. Some ways are healthy, others not so much. For example, even though I am and have always been independent, I went through this transformative experience that the quote describes. Because I think that quote touches on so many different aspects of our experiences in relationships, right? Being able to be happy no matter what other people in our lives are doing, you know, no FOMO, really taking responsibility of our own 
happiness first because once we do all that again like the quote says it becomes so much easier to actually love the people in our lives because we are no longer wrapping them up with our own emptiness our own shattered spaces I had codependent tendencies that came out specifically in my romantic relationships. Codependent basically means what the quote described, the ways in which we depend on others that leads to some sort of unhealthy imbalance. It can show up in our platonic friendships, familial relationships, romantic relationships, however it may be. So when we declare our responsibility and hold ourselves accountable for our own happiness, we do not depend on anyone else to fill our cup up for us. We fill up our own cup first. And this doesn't mean our friends don't help and support us when we need, but it simply means we don't depend on them for that filling of our cup for that which we need to pour our own loves back into those empty shattered spaces because we know we can do this for ourselves because we are doing it for ourselves we're demonstrating to ourselves that we can in fact fill those empty shattered spaces with our own love that we do not need someone else to fill those spaces because no one else can and again for some context and an example i'll use my own experience like i said independence is just my natural default and i learned by both default and necessity how to be on my own and enjoy it. Part of it was that I was bullied in third grade for literally just being myself. (laughs) And I lost friends for no other reason than because of other people's opinions and perceptions of me since I was 10. And I had friends come and go into my life as the result of my mistakes and my choosing to release people and friendships that were not aligned with me, who I am, my values, my character, and who I want to be and where I'm going with my life. So as a friend, as I grew up and even today, it's easier for me to navigate friendships in this way that is completely filling my cup up first because then I can show up for my friends and enjoy them for who they are and enjoy the magic of when we come together not because I need to spend time with them because I'm lonely want a distraction whatever it may be but because I want to spend time with them that's the intention the decision so in that same breath I've noticed the ways in which people use their friends, not only as the quote describes as an excuse to not feel good, but also as a crutch to fill those empty, shattered spaces, to fill time mindlessly, or because they didn't want to be alone. And for me, this showed up in a lot of the romantic situations that I would partake in. And again, for me, it was a lot easier to separate myself and be objective about friendships versus romantic relationships. And perhaps that's for everybody, uh, but there's somewhere we can start. We can identify where we can start, you know, clean house and start implementing conscious, intentional decisions about who we spend our time with and how we spend our time and whether or not people in our lives should be in our lives anymore. This is something I 
will advocate for until the cows come home. We need to normalize this. It is so normal to say, I don't think we should be friends anymore. I don't think we should be seeing each other anymore. You might be the initiator, but both people are going to benefit from that friendship ending because it's not in alignment with either people. And people are trying to make it work. And I think especially high school, middle school, high school, college, age, maybe even post-college. I think it's really hard for people to do that. But the more you practice, the easier it becomes. And the more you define to yourself, these are my values, this is what I want in my life, this is what I stand for, the easier it is when people come into your life and leave your life to say, yeah, no, they weren't in alignment with it. Dust your hands off. Bye-bye. All the best to you. And I think this goes without saying, but there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. And I learned this. I learned this out of necessity. I realized because of the friendships I lost and because of the friendships I walked away from, the benefits and the joys of being alone very early on in life. I think in any sort of instance, when people leave our lives or when we let go of people, we have a choice to make. We can enjoy it and see the silver linings and, you know, appreciate the relationship for what it was, but understand that better things are coming and good things are here because I have this time and space alone to enjoy my own company and my own friendship. Or we can continue with a story that blames the other person for our unhappiness, like that quote that we shared earlier describes. And I think it's really hard to look ourselves in the eyes and be honest with the ways in which we are crippling ourselves with the relationships in our lives. Time doesn't necessitate a good friendship. Time just says you've been friends with someone for a long time. It doesn't mean that friendship is even good for you. Again, these are all, th- <laughs> these are all things I've learned uh, and experienced firsthand. And I'm here to tell you, on the other side of leaving relationships that are no good for you, friends, familial, romantic, whatever, is a world of possibility, better relationships, better respect for yourself, more respect for yourself, more understanding of your value and your worth, and establishing a solid foundation in relationship with yourself. (laughs) It is truly a gift we can choose to give ourselves to face the fear of being alone, of being lonely, because you'll find that there's really nothing to fear. And whatever was the problem, whatever you were afraid of, whatever those empty, shattered spaces are, you can resolve them and fill them and heal them because you actually are giving yourself the time, space, energy, and ability to do so. I think that's also one of the most essential things I learned through all of that was those empty spaces, that fear, those shattered spaces are only going to turn into deeper anxieties by being ignored. They'll become louder. We fan the flames when we try to ignore them because that is what then leads to that codependency, that need for that other person. Because in those dynamics, if that person leaves or if something happens, that's when you're like, oh shit. I can't do this. I can't be alone. I can't. I need someone else. I need to fill this space. I need. And then we run into the next relationship, friendship, whatever. And we don't resolve. We don't fill those empty, shattered spaces with love. There's a difference between spending quality time with people and just spending time with someone. 
it's a really great measure we can use to evaluate the relationships in our lives. When you look at the relationships in your life, what is the time like when you spend with these people? Does it match what you want to be doing? Do you want to be sitting on your phones, not talking to each other? Do you want to have conscious, deep conversations with people? Define what you define as quality time and then measure those relationships up against that. And you'll find some relationships are worth it. In some relationships, you know, you have to have that conversation where it's like, hey, you know, I noticed that you're constantly on your phone, on your computer, you know, you're constantly distracted while we're spending time together and it hurts my feelings. I've had to have those conversations. That's, for me, that's one of my big ones. And some people can appreciate that feedback. Others, you'll get feedback from how they respond or react to your asking them to meet you at that conscious quality time. And you might find even in some relationships, your role in that relationship perhaps is to elevate that relationship to its fuller potential. And some you'll find are not worth it and dust off your hands and bye bye when we're in relationships that are clearly not making us feel good and not good for us, we have a choice. We can stay or we can leave. And again, for me, it's been easier to cut off friends. It was normalized for me at a young age by both my own choosing and the choosing of other friends. And I realized the benefits and the bright side of removing people from my life that were no good for me, that there is nothing to fear in that. And I think by both losing friends and choosing to lose friends, I showed myself over and over again, I can fall back on myself. I can depend on myself. I can pick myself up. I can be my own best friend and I can find friends that are better for me. It's never the end. And I think that's when things quote unquote end, that's scary, perhaps. It's 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 a lot. It's a whirlwind of emotions. But the stronger our solid foundation of ourselves becomes, the easier it is to deal with those inevitable comings and goings. And again, for me, it was harder to do this romantically, but with time and like we've talked about before, the quiet heart pings becoming sirens, I grew better at it. The more I got clearer about and remembered who I am, what I stand for, where I'm going, and what my values are, the more it was clear to me certain things that didn't fit in my life and certain things I needed to let go of because it's only when we let go of them that we have the space to welcome in better, that we have the space to strengthen and fortify our foundation within ourselves. It's really hard to do this in a relationship, especially a romantic relationship or a codependent friendship. I've been in the codependent romantic relationships. So I can speak on that in the sense that there is no time for self. Where is the time and the energy and the clarity of mind to put that energy back into yourself if you're always giving to someone else? Because I've, I've, I've been in situations in high school when I was in an abusive, codependent, unhealthy relationship. It was so hard for me to walk away from that. So I, I can empathize with how, how difficult it can be. But eventually I did. And eventually my whole world opened back up and I was like, holy shit. First of all, what just happened? Second of all, you know, that was not Lydia. Like, I don't even know the girl that was in that relationship. 
if if we can learn from these relationships, it's that relationships really do have an impact on us. They have an impact on how we show up, how we can show up for our lives and ourselves. And in unhealthy, draining relationships, it drains our ability to show up as ourselves authentically, fully, and give our gift to the world. So if you struggle to let go of something, ask yourself why. Get to the root of it within yourself and focus your energy on healing and resolving that, on healing and resolving those empty, shattered spaces. Again, I'll say in that unhealthy, abusive relationship in high school, I had empty, shattered, unresolved spaces within myself that I wasn't sure could ever be fixed, would ever be fixed. And part of that created my part in that dynamic, that fear. But again, on the other side of that is healing, is resolve, is making the unconscious conscious so that it no longer directs our lives disguised as fate. And whatever capacity this shows up for you in your life, it's a skill worth learning, the ability to let go and let people go. A doorway works two ways. People come in and people go. If we want to be open, that means we allow people to come in and we allow them to leave. And we also know when to say, you've overstayed your welcome, the door's over there, Don't let it hit you on the way out. The point is, however it is, whatever it is, when we take responsibility for ourselves, the trajectory of our lives and our well-being, we witness our limitless capacity and we establish healthy, deep, and meaningful connections and friendships because we are the ones filling our own cups. And then we can give and receive in equilibrium and abundance. Once we take responsibility and more so accountability, our relationship with ourself becomes our opportunity, not out of selfishness, but out of necessity. We need to normalize this because no one can pour from an empty cup. So that's it for part one. Remember next week, we're going to finish up this conversation and really dive deep into our relationship with ourselves and how to befriend ourselves and the benefits of doing so. You've already got a lot to work with and a lot of food for thought to think about and focus on the context of the relationships you currently feed and their impact on you and the dynamics of those and the ways in which they either elevate you or drain you. And some good action that you can take once you reflect on this. That's really powerful. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Links are down below to follow Reself on Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, whatever floats your boat. If you want to join our beta test, we are accepting applications to our Reself beta program. You can apply using the link in the show notes. Very exciting. Very great for your relationship with yourself. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to finish up this conversation next week. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that episode. And have a great week. Bye, everybody.